It is one of the darkest chapters in Cleveland history. What would you like to know? In the mid to late 1930s, our city was known to many as the most dangerous in America. The town was uh, in, gripped in fear. And during that time, a serial killer stalked this city. When the serial killers are out there, we're all afraid. A brutal killer who inspired dozens of books and blogs. Two haunting tales that we will tell you about. The first, written nearly two decades ago by English professor Dr. James Bedal. I mean, there were so many misconceptions around the torso murders that had been festering for so long. In the wake of the butcher. Somebody had to set the record straight historically. The second, written recently by attorney Michael Jordan. So I found this whole story captivating and said, this needs a book. A fictionalized version titled, The Company of Demons. Look at the interest that still engenders in Cleveland now in 2018. And these happened so many years ago, but people find the entire topic fascinating. He always took the head off. The torso murderer claimed at least a dozen victims from 1934 to 1938. Sometimes he dissected them more than that. Most of the killings concentrated in an area called Kingsbury Run. These days, it's better known as the area near the flats. Uh, he was non-discriminatory, killed black, white, women, men. Interestingly, he tended to leave the men intact, but the women he cut up in smaller pieces. Don't know why. The coroner at the time said that the murderer probably could do a better job than half of his staff in dismembering a corpse. Out of the 12 official victims, only two were ever truly identified. But all of the victims had one thing in common. People who would not be missed, people who had no identity. In the pages of Cleveland's history, this was the city's first serial killer. The duel, if you will, between the Torso Killer and Elliot Ness was just a fascinating bit of history. It even brought the famed cop Elliot Ness to Cleveland to take over as public safety director. Ness, best known for taking down gangster Al Capone. But the Torso Killer wouldn't be as easy to catch. The pressure to find someone, anyone, was so intense. For years, the killer taunted Ness, sending letters and postcards. He even admitted it to Elliot Ness in one of the postcards, sort of. This one, signed the American Sweeney. Some believe it's a reference to Sweeney Todd, a fictional serial killer in Britain. So the fact that he would call himself the American Sweeney is the kind of joke he would love to play and the true nature of the torso killer's crimes. A mystery within a mystery. The official police file disappeared. It's gone. No one can say exactly when or how it happened, but it's gone. It's why so much of today's knowledge about it is reconstructed from documents and newspapers, from people's memory. Two authors, fact versus fiction, struggling with the unsolved. There's no sense of closure. Not for the families of the victims, and not for the public. Because we'll just never know. That final chapter, still waiting to be written. But even though investigators could never claim to have caught the killer, Dr. Badal says his years of research brought him to a single conclusion. Who do I think did it? It was Dr. Francis Edward Sweeney, uh, a skilled surgeon who fell into alcoholism and drug addiction, uh, lapsed into paranoid schizophrenia. A city ripped in fear, a dozen faceless victims. I'm 99% sure we pegged it. And the belief that this face, this man, is Cleveland's torso killer. Francis Edward Sweeney, nothing points away from him. So who was Dr. Francis Edward Sweeney? And if he really was the torso murderer, how is it possible he was never caught? I could spend hours telling you about those theories, but there are enough theories floating around to fill so many more books. So for now, we'll leave it at this. According to Dr. Badal, Sweeney was the secret suspect interrogated by Elliot Ness in 1938. 
Ness had all the clues pointing to Sweeney, but not enough to take to court. Sweeney died in a veteran's hospital in 1964, never charged with a crime. Homa Bash, News 5.